All right, so welcome back to Let's Play Vin Tutor. We're going to continue on with lesson three. So 3.1, the put command. Type P to put previously deleted text after the cursor. So the first step is we want to move the cursor to the first arrow line below. So let's do that. Let's move it to this first one here. Uh, second step is type DD. Remember that deletes the line. So if we do that, that's going to store it in a Vim register. A Vim register can be thought of if you're coming from sort of a Sublime Text, Microsoft Word type editor, uh, then that's kind of the clipboard. It's saving it in a buffer. And you can think of it as cutting text. And then when it's in the buffer, we can paste it. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going to do with this put command, p and put or p and paste are kind of similar mnemonics we can use for this. Step three is move the cursor to the line to the C line above where the deleted line should go. So we cut the D line, there's B, C, A. We want to put these things in order. So we want to put the D line after C. And we want to, in, in order for us to put it there, we're going to move the cursor right above where it should be. So it should be below C, so we're going to put it right above where it should be. So that's where the cursor is now. And then four is type P to put the line below the cursor. So I'm going to do that and the D line is put there, pasted, similar mnemonic. And what we want to do in step five is repeat steps two through four to put all the lines in the correct order. So we have B, C, D, A. So we want to move the line A to the top. So let's move the cursor down so that we can cut or delete the line. So let's press D, D. Now the line is stored in the Vim register or the clipboard if you like. We're going to move it, the cursor, up to right above where the line should be. So it's right above where it should be because it's going to come before the line B. I'm gonna hit paste or P and that puts it right where it should be. So if you're following along, which I hope you are, go ahead and try to just delete certain lines of text, paste them, put them, and just do this until you become proficient with this movement. If you're coming from any other text editor, you know that cutting and pasting is kind of a very common and useful motion or action. So being able to do this productively in Vim is, is quite important to, to be productive in Vim. It's quite important to move around and to actually get something done. So I encourage you to continue to play around with that until you feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to continue to move on to lesson 3.2 by pressing the J command here to move down. So lesson 3.2 is the replace command. So type Rx to replace the character at the cursor with X. All right, so step one is move the cursor to the first line below marked with the arrow. So we'll do that. So we're here. And then step two is move the cursor so that it's on top of the first error. Okay, well, if we look at the second line, it says when this line was typed in, someone pressed some wrong keys. If we look at the line that we're on, uh, there's some pretty clear typos that we need to change. So step two says move the cursor so that's on top of the first error. So the first error that I see is this A should be an E. So then step three is type R and then the character which should be there. So R is in action for replace. So I'm going to type R. So nothing happens. But now what we want to do is we want to type the character which should be there. So it's an A. We want to replace that with an E. So if I type an E, that replaces the A with the E. So we're going to continue this. So we're going to keep moving to the right. Notice that I'm. it didn't switch me into insert mode. It kept me into normal mode. So I was able to move without having to press escape. So let's see this again. So the next error that I see here is lime should be line. So what I'm going to do is hit R to replace and then hit the character that should be there, which is an N. So now lime is line. Okay. So again, I can just, without pressing escape, since I'm maintaining my normal mode status, I'm still in normal mode, I can continue to move to the right. This is the next error that I see. This U should be a Y. So I'm going to say R, Y. Move over one character. That O should be a P. So let's do the same thing there. All right, let's see. Someone pressed. Looks like this W. So replace. And then the character that we want to replace it with is E. Uh, and I think the this last one here is this J, so we'll replace the J with an N. And I think that looks good. Right, so now move on to lesson 3.3. And there's a note that, remember, you should be learning by doing, not memorization. Um, 
I, I hope that you're following along as I'm doing this. Again, if you're just kind of watching me passively do this, that's probably not going to get you very far. So I encourage you to uh, actually open up a text file and just follow along with me as I'm doing this. Okay, good. So I think I've said that enough. Let me move on to lesson 3.3. So lesson 3.3 is the change operator. So the change until the end of a word, type CE. So again, there's a very clear mnemonic here, C, change, E, end. So it's really easy to see how this would fit into your flow without having to memorize letters that don't really mean anything. It's again, kind of like a language. So step one, move the cursor to the first line marked below with the arrow, so let's do that. So place the cursor on the, on the U in L-U-B-W. Okay, so L-U-B-W is all the way here at the front, so let's do that. We'll place it on the U there. And then it says type CE, so change the end, uh, and the correct word, in this case, I-N-E. So we're going to essentially change UBW to I-N-E. So what we're telling Vim is like, change from where the cursor is up to the end of the word, and then whatever I tell you to change it to is what will be replaced with, uh, what we will be replacing UBW with. So let's just type that out. So change C, end, and then I'm going to type in what we want to change it with, which in this case is I and E. So we're in insert mode here, so I'm going to get back into normal mode by pressing escape. And then step four says, okay, yeah, press escape and move to the next character that needs to be changed and repeat this until we've done all of the corrections necessary. So let's continue on with this thing. So this line has a few, looks like this one here. So this word should be words. So let's do that. So basically we'll put this right on the, uh, let's see, we'll put this right on the part of the word that we want to change. So the first part of the word that's incorrect is this P. And then we want to change all of the characters up until the end of it. So again, we're going to change to the end, and then we're going to start typing what we want this to be replaced with, which is ORDS, so we get words. Escape to go back to normal mode, and just keep this going. So let's see, so we've got that, and now this word should be need. So we're going to start, it looks like that whole word is wrong. So we have to change everything from where the cursor is blinking currently at the start of the word to the end of it. So change, end, and then need escape to go back to normal mode okay let's see so we have here this us this f should be changed to ing change and ing and let's see i think we have uh we have a the that's missing so let's actually go back um, and just to kind of change it up here let's just say instead of using ce we could use ce we could go over here c e and then we could say the escape and let's see, uh, actually I forgot to, looks like, um, oh actually I changed to the end of the word. So I started, here's a learning moment, I started in between these two words. I said change to the end and it changed to the end of the change word, which I didn't mean to do. So I'm going to escape, undo that, and instead of doing CE, I'm just going to say I for insert space, type in the. And that is that. So I think the uh, lines are the same now. So that is the end of this one. So it says, notice that CE deletes the word and places you in the insert mode. So we know that because we've had to press escape to get back into normal mode. So I think that's the end of lesson 3.3. Again, just play around with this until you're comfortable. So lesson 3.4, more changes using C. So the change operator is used with the same motions as delete. So the change operator works in the same way as delete. The format is C for change, followed by the number, how many uh, times you want to perform this action, and then the motion. So it, for instance, on a word or at the end of line or something like that. So two, the motions are the same. So just like you had this huge vocabulary for delete two words, delete to the end of the sentence or whatever it happens to be, you can have the same uh, expanse of actions, but now instead of delete, you can replace that with change. So step three is move to the first line below marked with the arrow. So let's do that. Uh, let's see, where am I here? Uh, I'm over there. Okay, I'm moving 
move up. Okay, there we go. So we want to move to the first line below marked with the arrow. Move the cursor to the first error. Okay, let's see. So the end of this line needs some. Okay, so it looks like sum is the first one that we need here. Uh, let's see. So this line, the end of this line needs some help to make it look, to make it like the second line. Right, okay, so then move the cursor to the first error, type C dollar sign, and type the rest of the line like the second line, and press escape. Okay, so we wanna make it like the second one, so instead of some help to make it like the second line, we're going to replace that with to be corrected using the C dollar sign command. So if I say C dollar sign, that's going to get rid of whatever is after the cursor all the way to the end of the line, and it's going to put me into insert mode. So now I can start typing to be corrected using the C dollar sign command. So let's just actually go back one. So let me undo what I just did there. So I undid and it's just like it initially was. So remember that we had in lesson two, we could say delete to the end of the line dollar sign now we could, what we could do is we could say insert and then space and then start typing. However, if we know that we need to start typing some stuff after this, then it's more efficient for us to say cut to the end of the line so that way we're already in insert mode. We don't have to explicitly press the I key. Otherwise, if we just want to delete it and then just move on with our lives, we can say delete up until the end of the line, delete dollar sign. So depending on your use case, depends on whether or not you might want to use cut or delete. So let me just undo this again and let's just repeat what we just did. So cut dollar sign, it cut all the way up to the end of the line. We're in insert mode already and I can continue writing the sentence. So to be corrected using the C dollar sign command. And I'm gonna press escape to get back into normal mode. So it also says, note, you can use the backspace key to correct mistakes while typing. So just like you would in a normal text editor, backspace, when you're in insert mode, uh, deletes just like you would expect it to. Okay, so let's move on to lesson three summary. So lesson three summary, step one or item one, to put back text that has just been deleted, type P. So again, P is put or the mnemonic, if it's helpful to you, could be paste. This puts the deleted text after the cursor. If a line was deleted, it will go on the line below the cursor. So good to remember that. Item two, to replace the character under the cursor type R, and then the character you want to have there. So R, again, the mnemonic there is R is for replace. Item three is the change operator allows you to change from the cursor to where the motion takes you. So e.g. type CE to change from the cursor to the end of the word, C dollar sign to change to the end of a line. And more broadly speaking, the format for change is C number motion. So just like you had for D, which was delete, change also can be followed by a number and a motion. And that's pretty much it for lesson three. So I'm going to stop uh, the video here and we're going to continue on with lesson four in the next video. So if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.